hybrid systems with the vinyl sealer um, now or just when you have to? Um, so I like to use the vinyl sealer, especially we refinish a lot of oak up here and a lot of it, you'll have problems with like the dye migration, like yep. coming through, especially where the oak's real thick and deep. And, um, so I love to use the vinyl sealer on stuff like that. But if I'm shooting something smooth, like maple, then I typically don't. Yeah. Um, I think maybe one time I had a china hutch which i typically don't do furniture to be honest with you i don't enjoy doing furniture i really i just like doing the cabinets doors are so easy especially like i have drying racks so i lay them flat so it's super easy but i had one time i had a china cabinet that was part of their kitchen so i did it and i think that's the only time that i've had maple doors that like turned orange in the corners because of the previous dye stain underneath it yeah so well, now, i want to interject because you're saying the the proper thing. You're saying dye migration and not tan and bleed, which I think is something I think a lot of people misconstrue tannin and dye migration. Can you talk a little bit about the difference? Yeah. So typically tannins, like the natural tannins in the wood are something that you maybe have to worry more so when it's like raw wood. But when you're in a refinishing, especially with oak, wherever the grain is like has like the deep cuts like if you run your thumbnail across it and you can catch your thumbnail in those deep grain like a lot of times that's just where the previous stains soaked in um that you're getting to pull through because i noticed like the china cabinet i did was like a dark reddish mahogany color well sure enough when i primed it there was a couple of spots in the corners that turned pink so that's actually the dye stain versus like it's not tannins in the wood if that makes yes. sense yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> I'm I'm on a mission to correct that as much as I can, and I'm glad you brought that up. That's most really of the time, information. most of the time when I talk to people, I just say bleed through. Like with oak, you might have bleed through because I got you. Then uh, I don't with a homeowner at least. Then I don't have to go into a big sure conversation about what's what. It just if you want to paint your oak cabinets white, you're probably going to have to worry about bleed through. <laughs> yeah. Now so, talking about the vinyl sealer for a little bit. So what's your favorite? your favorite vinyl sealer? Cause I know you've tried a couple of different ones and uh, kind of why you like one or the one over the other. Yeah. So if I'm going to, if I know I'm going to be spraying a lot of doors, I really like the CIC, the 275. Um, to me, it actually smells even less than bin. I know a lot yeah. of people use bin and I use it for a long time. I still use it once in a while. I know some people say they have problems with the chipping. I honestly don't know if that's maybe a more of a prep issue because I don't have those problems. And I mean, I did my kitchen eight years ago with like not a good paint, like a Rust-Oleum, whatever, before I got more into cabinet finishing. And um, I don't really have problems with the chipping, but I do like the vinyl sealer better than it. Um, and I think the 275 actually smells less than the bin. So everybody that says they want to get away from bin, but they're worried about, um, you know, the smell, I think that's a great option. I also um, keep a little can, like a little rattle can of a uh, Mohawk. They're easy, quick dry vinyl sealer. Cause wow. that way if you're on site and you gotta do a little touch up or something bleeds through on site, I can just give it a little spritz and it's clear. So then it doesn't change the color and you can paint right over it again. Yeah. So, so those are probably my favorites. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. The, the CIC is the least noxious vinyl sealer on the market. And the other thing that I really like about it is it like, it sounds like a water base. Yes. Primer. Like it just like, yes. it's like powdered donuts everywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I love that. I usually come I'm, upstairs all dusty. My eyelashes yeah. will be white. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a great thing about that. Um, now I will note to some people that are listening on this, that stuff doesn't like HVLP very much. I, I, no. I really suggest, you know, using an airless or an air assist with that product. I don't know what it is. I mean, it's like super thin, but it just, the, it just doesn't atomize right with the, with the yes. HVLP. It looks like real orange peely and stipply mm -hmm. and then you got to sand all that out and it's kind of frustrating. Yeah. That was actually the first way I tried it. Um, another one of the local cabinet finishers, Lisa, her and I are good friends and we had a little fun test day with a bunch of different products in our shop and that was one of them. And we put it through her HVLP and we were both like, Oh man, we were bummed because yeah. it did not look good. And I told her, I was like, I'll take it home and spray it through my airless and see what it looks like. And I was like, Ooh, money. <laughs> okay. The other vinyl sealer that I've tried, um, was from ML Campbell, their quick dry vinyl sealer. It works good. But what I will say is 
my husband wanted to murder me. I sprayed <laughs> six doors in my basement. And even mm. after I completely cleaned my spray room out, um, my house smelled like lacquer for like two weeks, like bad, like make your yeah. eyes water bad. So yeah. it works fantastic. Um, but after that, if I needed to use it, I actually took like an old camping tent that was tall enough that I could stand up in and I would spray them outside and then rack them in the garage. That's so. cool. That's a good idea. Yeah. So yeah, for people who don't want to spray a vinyl sealer in their house, that's a great way to do it. Yeah. Or just get the CIC and then it smells Absolutely. less than in. So yeah. this is interesting that you bring this up. Um, have you tried putting any of the sensations or anything in it yet? I haven't, but I saw um, Hallman Lindsay is like one of the main paint distributors here in Wisconsin. And I saw it sitting on their desk and um, I kind of laughed like, what is that? And then all of a sudden <laughs> I saw you and a couple other guys talking about it on one yeah. of your other um, uh, videos. And I was like, hmm, maybe I should try that, but yeah. I haven't yet. So I actually have CIC convinced um, they're actually going to come out with, a, they have fragrances because they, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, you can't do it. It affects this. No, nah, it's it's cool. It, it works. Yeah. Now, I don't know. Other companies may feel differently about that. But um, as far as what I'm being told by the guys at CIC, Miles is cool with it. And they actually have um, some fragrances that you can put in. So they're debating on either putting it in and just having it in or nice. they're going to have it to where you can add it. And they're also – um, Annex right now is filling spray cans with CIC vinyl sealer, but CIC is also um, talking about putting it out. Just go ahead and having it with their logo straight from the factory out of their spray can, uh, spray can too. So awesome. Yeah. So if you're doing a if you're doing a refinish with water base, what is your um, are you what are you what are you sanding to? What are you what's your um, I guess uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, your, your most common practice, you know, yeah. how are you prepping? Prep how work. are you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so obviously we go in, we take all the doors and drawer fronts off, bring them to the shop. Um, the first thing we do is clean everything really good. Now in my apprenticeship, we use TSP and hand sanded everything. Um, I really like simple green. They make a nice TSP alternative and it's non-toxic and it doesn't smell bad. Um, so we typically use that for our first clean. And then after that, I make a furniture wash. So I do a mixture of like denatured alcohol and water and wipe everything down. Um, while we're cleaning, I actually got some really cheap sanders and use those non-woven like marine maroon pads. Uh -huh. yeah. So that works really good, especially when you have doors, like if you have a microwave that vents upwards onto like the two little cabinet doors, then they get real filthy. Yeah. Um, so the cheap sanders and the non-woven pads with the simple green, that works really good. If you get some that are super, super grody, I do always keep some naphtha on hand. I mm. believe that was originally made automotive degreaser, but yep. it works phenomenal. And I actually learned in my apprenticeship, if you use oil-based paints and a sponge, like a sea sponge with a little bit of naphtha, you can actually create a like fake marble countertop look. So it's good to have a few tools in your toolbox that you can use for different things so I keep some of that on hand also um and then as far as sanding goes I have a Festool sander um I really really love the contour sanding pads that they've come out with for cabinet doors because when I was doing kitchens by myself hand sanding 30 doors in a day really takes a toll on your wrists and your hands and stuff like that so the contour pads, um, I've used some from Unita, and then I recently at Corey's tr class tried out the ones from Surf Prep for the festival. Those work really, really nice. Um, I usually use the medium grit on those for the first sand before I prime, and that seems to work really well for me. So that's about a 180 scratch. And then... Yeah. And I'm glad you brought up the naphtha. Um, that's a, something that a lot of um, people that are getting into this trade don't know about. And um, that was actually what I originally started cleaning um, cabinets with because the guy that I learned from was an automotive guy. And so ah. if he had fish eyes or anything like that, that's what he would clean it with, even with yep. water base. So if you have some type of, of contamination, um, now there's other mixes too. So like you can use straight naphtha, like you're saying, or you can mix acetone and naphtha um, together as well. So if you have something that you have that you spray a door and it goes fish eye crazy, 
my recommendation is to take the naphtha and the acetone, either you know use them together or you want to mix them, and then wipe your door down, sand it back, and then reshoot it. But just do one door and make sure you get it before you <laughs> yeah. go through the whole thing to make sure that takes care of it. But that's an excellent point to bring up the naphtha for cleaning because it it is it works very very well and gets rid of a lot of contamination. If you're using airless. I know a lot of people coming from HVLP. What are some recommendations in safety? Because I haven't really talked that much about airless safety because, I mean, I don't know if anyone's ever Googled injections, but Ooh. like it's not, <laughs> I, it's yeah. not, it's not pretty. I mean, you can lose your arm. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we haven't really talked much about that safety. So would you talk a little bit about your experience with that and kind of, especially since you, you know, you're coming from a, um your background and your training i know yeah. safety is huge oh um, yeah Absolutely. a huge part of the job um that's definitely huge when you go through an apprenticeship the first class they make you take is osha 10 everything's all about safety um there was actually two different painters that i worked with when i was an apprentice one guy was missing like half of his thumb um from an injection hazard and another guy can't remember if it was pointer or finger pointer or pinky finger. Um, but it's definitely something that people need to be aware of. Um, I do see a lot of people, you know, HVLP, like, doesn't look like it's coming out, and they'll put their hand in front of it. And it makes me cringe, even though it's just HVLP, because um, coming from a background of working with airless, like, it's just, you never want to put your fingers in front of the tip guard. Like, they even taught us, like, when you're putting the tips on, hold the outside of it and spin it. You don't want to go like this and spin right. it. Yeah. Um, because if that gun accidentally gets triggered or shoots a little bit, you know, if the gun's clogged, um, my old, old airless will clog. It's, I don't know, ancient and <laughs> has some issues now and then. So the one thing that I tell people is never put your fingers in front of the tip guard. Um, you always want to keep your hand behind that. And if it clogs hard enough that like you cannot switch the reverse tip, which has happened to me, um, especially mm -hmm. when we're on the big job sites and the pumps are going in and out of job sites, nobody owns them. Nobody takes care of them, you know. So I always keep a couple of wrenches or like channel locks handy. So if it clogs hard enough that you cannot switch that, flip that tip and shoot the clog out, you have a couple channel locks that you can use to turn it without having your hands by it in case that paint decides to shoot out a direction that it shouldn't, because if it injects in your skin, you need to go to the emergency room immediately. And even if it's water-based, like it, you can't have that inside your body. Yeah. It'll basically inject it into your bloodstream. Yeah. Yeah. And um, then you got sepsis in your blood and all sorts of nasty so, stuff. So, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that because, you know, you can do the same thing with air and air compressors. Um, yeah. It can inject air into your, your hand. You see guys put their hands up on, you know, those blow-off tools and stuff. And I was taught never to do that yeah. uh, when it's coming out at like 150 PSI. And one of the things you got to realize with, with an airless, we're not even talking about that. We're talking about 2,000. 1600 i mean basically yeah. the coatings we're running it's anywhere between 1200 and 2500 psi that's an insane amount of pressure yeah yeah and when i was an apprentice if we were spraying like black filler on masonry like sometimes you're looking at like 3000 like so you definitely never want to put your hands in front of it um if you have a problem a tip that clogs you know the first thing i'll do is get the channel locks out turn the pump off um if you can use the uh, prime valve, which the painters always called it the dump valve, to dump some of the pressure out, you're still going to have some pressure in your line, but that'll give you a little bit less. And I guess my other advice on that would just be like proper maintenance and preventing bad clogs like that from happening. Um, I use, they make little uh, one gallon like fine mesh strainer bags. So I will actually put the suction tube of the pump right through one of those fine mesh strainer bags and just tape it right around the suction tube because a lot of times those, especially on the airless, like we used to call them rock catchers because mm -hmm. the screen they have at the bottom of that isn't going to catch much besides rocks. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the fine mesh strainer bag around the suction tube will really help. And other than that, um, properly cleaning your equipment every time you spray um, you know, the big job sites, we would get busy and be like, oh, we'll be right back tomorrow. Just 
put a dump a little water, put a floater on it, cover it up with some plastic, it'll be fine. But that's how you start running into clogs or where you let go of the trigger and it just keeps spraying paint. Yeah. And then you're screaming for somebody that's, you know, you got 50 feet of line out, you're screaming for somebody to turn off the <laughs> cut pump. It off, cut it off, cut it off. So I learned really quickly to keep a gallon bucket and some channel locks with me. So if it won't turn off, put a rag over it or the channel locks, you know, if you need to unclog it. Um, but keeping your gun filter and your pump filter clean will prevent a lot of those clogs. And I think most of the time when people have a problem with an injection, it's because they're trying to fix something, you know, a clog or something right. like that. So, right. so have you tried, the, have you, have you tried a sonic cleaner yet or how do you keep your stuff clean? So I do not have a sonic cleaner. That's on my, on my list of things that I would love to have. Um, so I like my airless pumps, you know, obviously you're using water base or even my air assist flushing a lot of water, hot water through everything. Um, and then my tips, I actually let them soak in denatured alcohol. It just keeps everything soft and pliable. Yeah. Um, the other thing I'll say is for the, um, the CA tech pump, those tiny little tips, those things love to clog. And then you have those like tiny little needles and you're like doing surgery on them and it really yeah. sucks. So yeah. actually uh, another finisher on Instagram, when I got my pump, he's like, Hey, here's a tip for you. He's like, when you're done using it after you rinse it out, take your, um, your air gun and blow air through the tip backwards, like through the skinny part of the tip backwards. Mm -hmm. And it kind of shoots the rest of that paint and stuff back out of there so they don't clog up as much. And that actually works really well too. But like you said, I am careful how I hold it, that I don't have my finger right behind it. So you're not shooting right. paint, paint down air right into your thumb. <laughs> yeah. So that's interesting. You, you mentioned that because that's what, um, Russell, he was kind of doing that, or he would take like, um, like, uh, an air, like air duster cleaner, yeah. like, you know, so basically then you're not trying to use your air compressor or he would take like carb cleaner with the little holes and blow it through there. Cause it's like, you know, a little tiny straw. Yeah. That's um, a great idea. But I, I gotta tell you, um, <laughs> the sonic cleaner will change your life. I swear <laughs> those things are amazing. Like I wish I'd have bought one seven years ago like I don't know what took me so long yeah. to come to my senses actually what made me come to my senses and I actually have the Wagner with the reversible tips but I was spraying a job and it was clogging and I was getting just so <laughs> angry I was like I slammed my gun Throwing down things. And, I, and, I, and I called Ty I was like I don't care what it costs get me a sonic cleaner here now <laughs> <laughs> That's something so, you would see frequently on big job sites when uh, equipment has yeah. been overused and that little um, usually comes with temper tantrums when it doesn't work properly. <laughs> yeah, but that's a good tip. Um, and so while we're talking about that, I do want to bring up because I bought my sonic cleaner from Tide Total Finishing Solutions and it's it's pretty pricey. And there's some other ones out there that I've seen some other guys get that seem to work really well. And also it seems like um, the best cleaner is that AccuStrip. Um, mm -hmm. and I don't know if even that would be an alternative for some people. Um, it's, I think it's something make acetone go away.com. It's some kind of weird, but it's a, it's a water-based cleaner and it's like a replacement for acetone. Interesting. Um, so yeah, it, this is something that the solvent guys use to clean their guns. And so there was a couple of guys on Instagram. I think it started with Jekko finishing. Um, he's got a large shop up in Canada and then midnight finishing. Um, he was talking about it. And then also Dan Schaefer, which is on Instagram too. He swears by that stuff. And I haven't gotten any because I'm using the Enviro clean right now. Um, yeah. and I've got like two fives of it, so I'm going to use that <laughs> up first. And then I have, um, what Ty uses, which is gym strip seven, 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 which is actually a, um, it's actually a stripper. So it takes heat, but it's really super expensive. Um, so anyway, I just throw that out there for some people don't be discouraged. Like there are some sonic cleaners that evidently work really, really well for like a couple hundred bucks. Um, I paid like 600 for mine. Was it worth it? It was worth it to me. I didn't know any better. And I was so enraged with anger that I didn't care if it cost a thousand dollars. I was going to buy one. So if you get one, let me know how you like yeah. it. I think you're going to really like it. Um, for Definitely. sure. So Definitely on I, my list. 
you get a clog, how many? So a lot of people like airless. I feel like it's not as big a deal with airless because you got the reversible tip. You can turn it around, blow yep. it out. With air assist, how do you, how do you get your clogs out? Um, oh, do you boy. do the whole needle thing? I mean, how many <laughs> clogs do you get? Like, because that's one of the things that's really frustrating with the water base. Like, you want? I mean, you just go insane with anger. Yeah. So I don't really get too many. Okay. Clogs, to be honest, um, it happened a lot when I worked for a shop where the equipment was like overused and undercared for. Yeah. Um, my old airless definitely clogs, but like I said, that thing is an ancient dinosaur. You, it, like it's a Graco Nova and it doesn't even have numbers on it. It's so old. <laughs> um, as far as my air assist, um, I've probably only had that clog maybe twice, and then through it and then yeah I usually poke the little needles through it um but for the most part that one doesn't really clog a lot but I'm super careful with how well I clean the tips after I use it so do you think too though like so I've I've kind of been a proponent of doing like um an inline filter but it may be the case that because you're are you straining your material before you go to pump or are you just using that fine mesh bag over the rock catcher Cause you're yeah. kind of doing, you're kind of doing three forms of filtration with that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And I think that does prevent a lot of clogs. So I definitely, I do the fine mesh bag over the suction tube, tape, tape it right to the top of the tube, stick it in the bucket. Um, so I think that has eliminated a lot of the extra clogs because, you know, sometimes the bottom of those paint cans just have like a little bit of like stringy stuff yeah. that gets sucked up there. And I think that's what causes a lot of your clogs. So I really, I've probably only had the air assist clog maybe twice. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so yeah. Okay, cool. Well, maybe, maybe you can like post a, a picture or something in your story of the bags that you use. Cause I know people yeah. would be really interested in that. Um, Absolutely. I'm actually kind of curious. I, I'm going to try that in my hopper, put one of those like in my hopper and dump the, cause I gotta be honest. I don't strain anything. <laughs> <laughs> I just throw it in and go. Oh so I'm, man, I'm, too I'm, funny. I'm, I'm guilty, but <laughs> I'm running um on my air assist. I'm running with solvent. I never have it clogged. Like if I'm using vinyl sealer, it's like yeah. just take your finger and scrape the front of the you know with your fingernail and you're yeah. you're you're back on. on. Um, or you can just take a little uh, lacquer thinner and just wipe in there and you're good to go. But with the water base, I'm running the inline filter and that changed everything for me so i've got you know i've got a the rock catcher in the hopper because i'm i'm running a wagner cobra yeah and then it goes out to a 200 mesh filter and then i have a 200 mesh filter in the gun so you're getting three forms of filtration yep. but i wonder if it'd make it even better if i'd put those fine what is the mesh do you just get them at the local paint store yeah just at the local paint store so I don't know. When I was an apprentice, we, they made us strain everything all the time, sure. even when we were rolling walls. So they make them um, in like for like big five gallon buckets and then they make them for a little gallon. And it honestly is probably like the consistency of almost like a like a pantyhose. Like my husband takes them and uses them on the washing machine because we have dogs. So it'll catch like the dog hair and stuff that the washing machine spits out. Um so yeah, and they're super, super cheap and I rinse them out and reuse them. So they last a while. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. So I, I meant to bring one up so that I would have one next to me to show you, but yeah. um, I'll post a picture. That's probably better solution than my $200 solution of running. In my filter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I think mine, uh, I think my strainer bag is it's definitely less than a dollar. I don't know exactly how much, but definitely less than a dollar. <laughs> yeah, cool. Well, and I've seen I've seen some other guys like use them in their hoppers or whatever and pour the paint in, just like they, because they it's like a bag and you can uh, yeah a lot of put them, it in a bucket of paint or mm -hmm. yeah. a lot of them the top have like elastic so yeah when when we were rolling walls you know after for so many days you would get just crap in sure. your paint so then we would um just put it in a five gallon bucket and then just dump from the old bucket to the new bucket. But it works just as good if you just put it right around your suction tube and it's a little quicker. And then you're not dumping paint from one bucket to another and make an extra work for yourself. Yeah, nice. All right, so what would be your advice uh, based on what you know now for um, a finisher that is getting into cabinet refinishing or is trying to up their game 
what what do you think makes the biggest difference in in getting a, a fine finish like definitely I would start with just just some basic stuff you know don't be intimidated and don't be afraid to admit when you don't know something ask questions um there's plenty of people that have been finishing for a long time and everyone I've met has been super nice and super helpful um other than that, definitely focus on your prep work because if you don't prep it right, it doesn't matter how good your finish is, it's not gonna stick. Um, by us, we have some of those like Habitat for Humanity restores or like talk to a local like kitchen remodeling place when they demo kitchens where you can get doors for free or a dollar or two a piece and practice, practice. And every product sprays a little bit differently. like. Some products are super thin, some are super thick. Um, so definitely practicing, you know, have a variety of tip sizes. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. And then um, other than that, I think it's super helpful, like if you build a good team. Um, so like I have a local kitchen remodeling place that I can call up for my clients that will do like tile backsplashes and countertops um, carpenters that can like change, you know, change or modify like the kitchen Island or stuff like that. Like, so you don't have to be a Jack or Jill of all trades, but have a good team built around you so that you can offer a variety of services. Um, yeah. and other than that, I would say, be honest. I can say for sure my very first kitchen job that I got, um, was not because I had a ton of experience or anything that church I was working in when the secretary asked me to do her kitchen, she actually told me that the reason she hired me was because the pastor had asked if I could do a vinyl repair. And I said, I'll be real honest with you. I've never done one, but I've watched the guys in our shop do them a hundred times. So I could give it a try. And if it doesn't work out good, we could call one of the other guys to do it. And she's like, I love how you were confident. You were like, well, I haven't done it, but I think I could do it. She's like, you were honest and confident at the same time. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So a couple of things I want to elaborate on is you said prep. Um, and so my big thing that I've learned um, with water-based finishes is making your primers look like a top coat. If you can absolutely. do that, um, when you put that top coat on, it's going to be money. Because anything yeah. that you have underneath it, it's going to show through because it doesn't react like a solvent finishes where it's going to melt in and the solvent's going to help you out. And you don't have to be as good with your prep. I'm not saying you shouldn't be good with your prep. But right. It's right. almost like I've, I've almost kind of realized that like doing a, a really super awesome water-based finishes is like prepping for a gloss finish, to be honest with you. Like, yeah, it really is. Like when you sand and you're looking at it um, underneath the lights, which is something, you know, if you're you got to have good lighting when you're sanding um, and finishing. I find that I do a way better job when I can see. Uh, <laughs> I know I've I know I've made the joke before in the past that I do my best work in the dark and blindfolded. But <laughs> that's not really true. Um, but yeah, making sure that you sand everything dead flat and that you can see all that just makes a significant difference in the in the finish quality. Um, and speaking of that, so do do you have like a preferred? Um, sandpaper that you like that you feel works better than some of the other ones um not really it kind of depends what i'm doing like we just did um i'm part of a barbell club so we did a bunch of lifting platforms so like for that i just used like it was you know it's plywood so i did like a 120 grit like just the festool paperback mm -hmm. um for cabinets like i love like the unita and the surf prep contour pads I use the medium grit for like the original prep sand and then I'll use the fine grit or super fine between coats, depending on what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, I, I think honestly, I feel like especially with this year and I see people writing like that they can't get, you know, this kind of sandpaper, or they can't get that kind of paint or whatever because there are shipping delays or, you know, companies aren't producing as much or, you know, they got shut down. So I think as far as anything supply related goes, whether it's sandpaper or, you know, finished products, like a, a mechanic doesn't have just one wrench in his toolbox, have a variety of things you can use for everything so that when you run into a problem or you can't get something or something's not working, you have something else, you know, you can try. 
Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Have you tried the Cubitron paper yet? I have not. Okay. I got to send you some Cubitron. Okay. Um, it's, it's pretty nice. <laughs> I'll have you... to say that I will have to say that's probably my favorite sandpaper. I can make film abrasives work. Um, yeah. I like, I like film and especially with water-based, but man, the Cubitron it's, it's, it's next level. It's pretty nice. good. You seem to get your hands on a lot of uh, new, new, super great stuff. I don't know. When I call these companies, it's like, who's this girl from the middle of nowhere, uh, Wisconsin? Yeah. <laughs> I know it's it's a perk of of what I do. Um, but you know, it's also um, everyone's like, oh man, you know, blah blah blah. But a lot of people don't understand that. You know, a lot of times companies send me stuff, and like I'm doing a lot of work behind the scenes that y'all never see. Yeah. Um, you know, like this past weekend, I spent, you know, six hours looking at a new finish that's going to hit the market soon. And, nice. you know, I write up a whole report about all this stuff and I shoot it on a bunch of different wood and I test all these different things and I send it back to them. And then they decide whether or not they're going to make the changes or not. So, you know, nice. some of this free product and stuff. Like, actually <laughs> some, a lot of of work. Guys, some of you guys got it better because you just get the test drive and you just get it for free and you don't even have to do the work <laughs> well that's what we have you for <laughs> yeah exactly well i guess that's a good point um but yeah i'm sitting here looking at it now um let me grab this panel um this is one uh, mm, this is one of the the renter super hang Ooh, and um nice. i shot this vertically Okay. Um, you can, I, I've got a panel over there. I put like 10 wet mills on. This is about four or five and it okay. looks like I sprayed it flat. Nice. So this was, Very sprayed, cool. this was sprayed vertically. Awesome. Um, so if some of you guys that are, um, you know, you like to spray doors vertically. Yeah. This is, this is the, this is the coating to use. So, well, yeah. So the Cubitron thing though, that actually came about, um, through, um, Envirolac. Um, nice. he actually is the only one, if you want him for your three by four, he's the only one in the world that has them for the three by four, because he specifically had three M cut them for three by four standards. So nice. no one else has it. Um, you can get them in six inch and five inch discs. Well, Hey, thanks so much for coming on. This was, um, this was awesome. A lot of great, um, information and, um, some stuff that, um, some of the other people I haven't had come on and talk about. So it was great to have you. So if you want people to reach out to you, ask questions, do you or not? <laughs> oh yeah, that's fine. I answer questions all the time. Actually, after okay. you reshared one of my Instagram posts the other day, I had somebody message me and then then they said, well, actually, I, I'm, they wanted to know what pump and what tip I used. And then they were like, well, actually, I'm trying to do my own cabinets. And I was like, oh, then you're probably not going to invest what I invested in my pump. Right, right. So I was like, here, let me give you some better advice for like a DIYer. So yeah, absolutely. Sure. I really enjoy helping people. I tell everybody, like, send me before and after pictures. Um, so if people want to get a hold of me, I am on Instagram as a uh, little painter chick. It's kind of a nickname in the trades you know they're always like hey tinner hey sparky hey little painter chick like whenever they uh mess up your walls and want you to fix them so they don't get back charged for it <laughs> so i'm on instagram as little painter chick um on facebook you can find me at kaleidoscope interiors which is facebook.com back backslash color your world and then wi for wisconsin um, or you can find me at journeymanjess.com. That one is still a little bit under construction, but for the most part, it is up and working. Well, awesome. Well, thanks for having on. We definitely want to have you back again sometime and then convince some other women finishers out there to come on the show or start their own show. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you so much for having me. It was great chatting right. with you today. Absolutely.